Hello and welcome, Kendra Morgan here, and today I'm super excited to announce a brand new monthly sketch challenge for TLC Designs. The online store will have a new product called the Sketch Easy Bundle with the coordinating challenge number for each month. The bundles will include one digital stamp set and one small coordinating paper pack for only $5. You don't have to purchase the bundle in order to enter the challenge. There will be two ways you can win. So first is if you use a TLC product of any sort, follow the sketch and post a photo of your card in the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Group on Facebook. That's how you would enter. You would upload your photo under the TLC Designs Sketch Easy number 101 album, which is under media, and you can enter to win a free digital stamp set of your choice. Now, if you buy the bundle and use the digital products to enter the challenge, you can have a chance to win the grand prize, which is a free digital stamp set of your choice, plus a $10 gift certificate to the store. Now, anyone can play along and enjoy the sketch, but in order to win, you must use any TLC product, including the freebies. For the first 30-day challenge, beginning on August 2nd of 2021, the bundle includes the Poetic Pixie Digital Stamp Set, which has this cute little fairy holding a pencil, plus a wooden sign on an easel, a stack of books, and quite a few sentiments, the ones you see here. It also includes the Magical Delight Bundle Paper Pack, which has six different designs, and I'll show you those in just a moment. The sketch features two triangles on top of a layered frame piece with a circle in the center, layered on top of a scallop circle. This sketch also shows a little dragonfly embellishment, but you can use anything you'd like here. The Happy Dragonfly Circle die set is perfect to use with this, but if you don't have it, you can use something similar to create the circle pieces. This Sketch Easy Bundle is a great value because not only do you get a digital stamp set with images that come in both JPEG and PNG file formats, you also get a set of digital papers. A link to the bundle will be in the description box below. When you purchase the bundle, you get access to the files immediately, so you can get creative right away. You don't have to wait for the mail to arrive. You also have until August 31st to post your photos to be entered to win. So here are the different papers in the bundle that I printed off with my laser printer. They are five and a half by eight and a half inches. That's what I printed them as. And I'll be using the teal and green papers for the two cards that I'm making today. If you're not familiar with how to work with digital images or how to manipulate them, check out Misty's video that she recently shared called Digital Step-by-Step -Step Crafting. She shares how to use Silhouette Studio to layer images like I did here with the sign and the sentiments. The video will be linked in the description box below, but I just basically printed out all of the different images that came in this bundle and I made sure that they were grouped together and smaller than three inches and spread apart so that I could die cut them out later. So like I said, today I'll be sharing two different cards with you. The first card I'll be showing is just a basic side fold card using the teal blue papers. I'm using a black card base that is A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've cut a white mat to be an eighth of an inch smaller than the base. The measurements are listed on the sketch. For the triangle pieces, you'll want to first cut the rectangle piece to be four inches by five and a quarter. And you'll need to do this for both colors. Then you'll want to turn it diagonally and then line up the corners on your paper trimmer. Now you want to make sure that the points are along the cut line and you'll do this for both papers. Now you will be able to make two cards out of these pieces since you'll have two extra triangles. Whenever I went to cut this plain blue piece, my blade on my paper trimmer came out and I didn't have it placed back in there correctly so you'll see I struggle a little bit here but you you can use a paper trimmer like this one or you can use a guillotine trimmer whichever you prefer as long as you have your cut line lined up along the corners so that you're making a straight diagonal cut from one corner to the next so now that I have my triangles cut for the card base, I'm using a 110 pound heavyweight black card stock that I've cut at five and a half inches on the long side to create a side folding card. I scored it at four and a quarter inches using my scoreboard and bone folder. And I'm gluing down the white mat using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive, which will allow me a little bit of time to scoot it directly in the center where I want it. 
Then next, I'll be taking my two triangle pieces and lining them up to make sure I have the same amount of white space on each side. Now, if you need to, you can trim off a little bit of the long edge using your paper trimmer. You see now I'm using my guillotine. <laughs> I, I didn't want to mess with my, my uh, regular paper trimmer anymore. The guillotine is definitely, um, I, I just got it, so I'm still learning how to use it. But um, now that I have the white space along the edges lined up exactly, I'm going to glue these pieces down. And if, um, if you find that your two triangles don't line up exactly, it'll be okay because you will be placing a quarter inch strip on top and we're going to cut and glue that down next. It will cover up if, if there is a little bit of a gap. So as long as the gap isn't larger than a quarter of an inch, you're good. The main thing you want to get even here is the spacing around the triangles alongside that frame. You want to make sure that the white mat is even all the way around. So this strip will need to be at least six and a half inches long. And to me, it's best to cut it longer and then just cut off the excess with your scissors after you have it glued down. Okay, so you see me cutting off the little excess pieces of that strip here. Now that the card base is done, let's move on to coloring the image. For this card, I decided to use the sentiment, you're a masterpiece, along with the fairy holding a pencil. So I'm going to start with coloring his skin using E55 first along his hairline and anywhere that there should be a shadow. And then next I added E53 and just kind of blended those two shades together. Now for his hat, I started with BG05 and I colored along the edges with the BG05 and then I added BG01. Now for his wings, I used BG000, and then I colored his overalls with that same BG05. Well, I added R20 to his cheeks, and I used that on the pencil eraser. And then for the pencil, I used Y02 and then E53 for the top and then C3, which is a gray color for the metal piece at the bottom of the pencil. So now that the image is all colored and our card base is ready to go, it's time to do some die cutting. And I'm using the Happy Dragonfly Circle die set and I'm cutting out the image that I just colored with the double stitch circle die. And I'm cutting the scallop shape out of some black cardstock. And the two dragonfly wings, I'm using the extra teal colored papers. And I originally thought that I'd make the dragonfly's body be yellow, but I decided it was too bright. So I ended up cutting it out of some black cardstock later. I glued the circle pieces to the card base. And then I added the dragonfly body to the left side of the circle rather than on the right side like it shows in the sketch in order to balance it out. Now my fairy, my fairy dude holding the pencil is over on the right and so I didn't want to add another little, another something there. It needed to be on the other side. Now I could have flipped the fairy and made a mirror image on Silhouette Studio before printing him out but I didn't think about it at the time. Now because I'll be attaching the dragonfly's head to the white circle, his body's going to hang over and I didn't want it to just like flop around. So I, I used some little tiny foam adhesive circles and I attached that to the back of the dragonfly's body as well as to the back of the bigger wings. And then I just attached the smaller wings with some liquid glue and that just gave it a little bit of dimension. And then because I didn't want the fairy to just like be floating in the white circle, I decided to add some C0 underneath 
for for like a shadow this is like a a very light gray color and then of course I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle so I decided to add some clear wink of Stella to his wings And then next I added some turquoise bling rhinestone stickers to the center of the wings on the dragonfly. And then I also put some in the middle of the sparkle pieces on the top right triangle. Next, I decided to add some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew to the fairy's eyes to give it some shine. This does dry clear. It's similar to glossy accents. And this finishes off the first card. This next card is a fun diagonal fold card, and I'm going to show you how to create two card bases at once. You'll start with a sheet of heavyweight cardstock and score it down the middle, first at five and a half inches and then at four and a quarter inches. Next, you'll need something to mark from corner to corner di diagonally. So I'm using the edge of my scoreboard and I'm lightly marking it with a pencil. And then this next part, you can either cut along that pencil line with a pair of scissors or you can use a paper trimmer. This particular paper trimmer wouldn't let me place the paper along that diagonal line and close it because it, it wouldn't fit, it's too long. So I had to manipulate it a little bit and place it under the plastic bar at an angle. And then just, I cut what I could along that line. And then after um, doing that, I cut the rest of it with some scissors. So you can use a guillotine trimmer if, um, if it's big enough, but mine wasn't. It had that little plastic piece in the way. So this paper trimmer seemed to work the best. I was too scared to do this with just plain old scissors because I don't really cut very straight. And then I just erased my pencil mark that was still showing. So next you'll wanna take a bone folder and then burnish along the scored lines. And uh, you wanna make sure you're doing this on the right side. You'll see that I, I folded these backwards. Um, my, my triangles were cut the other way, but I'll fix that here in just a second. <laughs> Um, and I, I need to change the blade on my paper trimmer on my pink triangles here the edges were a little bit frayed you'll see when I cut here um, there's some little frayed edges so one way to fix that is to take a sand eraser along the edges and that gets rid of some of those um, little paper flakes that that are hanging off there So since my triangles are going the other direction, I need to turn my card base the other way. So I just flipped it inside out basically and I ran my bone folder along the edges again to make sure that it stays closed. And then you'll want to glue the pieces down. First you'll want to glue the, the, the matte piece first and then the triangle piece on both the top and the bottom. Now for the image on this card, I decided to use the sign this time with the sentiments welcome and back to school. I colored the sign with C0 and C3, which is a gray color, and then E55 for the wood part. Now I'm not going to talk the rest of the time that I'm coloring, I'm going to put on some music, but the colors that I've used are listed here on the screen.
Now using the same Happy Dragonfly Circle die set that I used earlier, I cut out the image with the double stitch circle same as before. And I used the same pink color for the scalloped circle that I used as my mat. And then the body, I used that same pink for the body of the dragonfly. And I cut the wings out of the different shades of color on the extra piece of the printed cardstock. And now when you're gluing down the circle, you want to only add glue to the back on the top right corner. You don't want to add any glue on the other side because you want it to be able to open up. Then I glued the pink dragonfly's body to the circle, just the head of it, and I used some glue tots, glue, glue tots, <laughs> glue dots, oh my goodness. Um, I only used glue dots on the head, so I didn't put any adhesive or anything on the rest of the body. And that way the dragonfly can just kind of hang over the side there when you open it up. Now before attaching the wings, I wanted to add a little bit of shine. So I decided to use some green frost embossing powder on top. So I'm placing the wings and the little flower pieces face down onto my Versamark ink pad. And I'm using the back side of my spatula tweezers to press the ink onto the entire surface of all four pieces. Now you could use just some scrap cardstock to do this if you don't have anything flat. Um, but I'm using my scrap piece of yellow cardstock to catch all of the excess embossing powder. And as you can see, I had a little bit of trouble getting that little tiny flower piece on there. And I haven't used this embossing powder in a while. And it's very humid here in Florida, so it's a little clumpy. And as you can see, a whole bunch of it just dumped out. But luckily, it all stayed on my scrap piece. So I can just pour it back into the jar after fishing out all of the pieces. I had to sift through it and, and try to find all of those little pieces. But before, um, before I melt the, the powder onto those pieces, I um, tried to shake off as much excess as I could. It had quite a bit of embossing powder on it. I made sure to heat up my heat gun for about 30 seconds before applying it. And I used my reverse tweezers to hold each of the pieces while applying the heat gun to melt the embossing powder. Otherwise, I probably would have burnt my fingers. This gets super hot, but I just love watching that embossing powder melt. That's like one of my favorite things. The embossing powder gave it a nice little iridescent green frosty shine. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But I glued down the pieces using some Gina K Connect liquid glue. This is super strong. And I added the flower to the center of the wings with a glue dot. I had to make sure that the wings were going to stay first. So I used my reverse tweezers to hold the the wings in place for just a little bit until they were dry and then I added that that flower to the center there and only added one glue dot but because the flower has a hole in the center I do end up covering that up um, to finish off the card I did the same thing that I did on the first card I added some clear wink of Stella to his wings and then I also added some Nuvo crystal drops and morning dew to the eyes to give them some shine I really love the fun fold on this card. I think it's super neat. You can add some pop-up elements to the inside or add another image or sentiment. There's just a lot that you can do with it. But um, adding this little iridescent rhinestone bling to the center of that flower and this finishes off the card. So here are both cards that are finished. I really hope this video inspires you to use the sketch in different ways and get creative. Don't forget to join the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Group on Facebook if you're not already a member. The link is in the description box below. Again, you have until August 31st to post your photos to enter the sketch challenge. The winner will be announced in the Facebook group, so make sure you turn on those notifications there. I look forward to seeing what you all create. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.